Hi, and welcome to Crossroads Online. I'm Rob Hall, the executive pastor here at Crossroads. In just a few moments, we're going to worship together. And we're going to be able to open the Bible, and we're going to get in close with God and, and learn from His Word and allow it to challenge and encourage our hearts as Pastor Dan brings the message. But if this is your first time, we want to welcome you, and I want to encourage you to go to crbible.com ftg at the end of this service and fill out the form and let us know that this is your first time because we want to connect with you. As we are worshiping, know that many hundreds of you are worshiping together right now this morning or whatever time you might be watching this. And it's an opportunity for us to, to gather corporately in separate places and worship God because that's what it's about. It, God deserves the praise and that's what we're going to do. And so this morning as we, we worship, I encourage you right now to, to allow your heart to connect with God through these songs as we worship with this team. I will exalt you, my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of your majesty, and of your wondrous works. They shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall abundantly declare the fame of your great goodness, and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious, and full of compassion, slow to anger, and, and great in mercy. mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all his works. Welcome to church. We're so glad you joined us. We're gonna be singing today about the goodness of God. That Psalm that we, we read together declared the goodness of God. And the truth is that no matter what comes, no matter what happens, God remains good. His, his goodness endures. And so today we, we invite you to worship with us, to sing with us as we declare the goodness of our God. Drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, cause you are good.
Cause you're a good, good father That's who you are That's who you are That's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am You're a good, good father It's who you are Church, lift that up. God is good. God is so good. Yes, it's true. God is so good. Oh, He's good. He's so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. One more time. Come on. God is so good. Oh, God, oh, He is so good. Oh, God is so good. He's so good to me. You have been 
been so good to me You have been so good to me I came here morning I came here morning But you gave me joy You have been so good You have been so good You've been so good to me How can I thank you? How can I thank you? There is just no way How can I thank you? Lord, how can I repay For your kindness For your tenderness for your constant presence here with me You have been so good to me Oh, you have been so good, God You have been so good to me I came here broken I came here broken You made me been so good you have been so good you have been so good to me hey how can I think how can I thank you there is just no way how can I thank you Lord how can I repay for your kindness for your tenderness, for your constant presence here with me. You have been so good to me. You have been so good to me. I came here broken. You made me whole You have been so good You have been so good That's the truth You have been so good To me thank you for being who you are. God, we just want to thank you for being good. We don't want to ask anything. We don't want to, right now, Lord, we just want to say that you are good. We just want to declare that over this, wherever we're at, God, wherever these, we are here gathered to worship you, God, we want to declare that you are good. Lord, you've promised that you would never leave us or forsake us. You've promised that in the middle of the storms, you'll be there right there for us, God. No matter what comes, you will be there with us. We can depend upon you. God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross. Lord, setting us free from the bondage of sin, from the punishment, from the penalty of sin. Lord, you've set us free once and for all. You beat death, you conquered the grave. Lord, your cross, your resurrection has granted us new life. We have eternal life through the blood of Christ. And so we are just going to declare this morning that you are good, that we love you no matter what.
because you love us no matter what. No height, no depth, no creature, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God, we declare it, that you are good. And we love you, it's in your name we pray. Amen. It is so great to have you with us today for our time of Bible study. Uh, man, this is so odd uh, being in this kind of a situation where we can't meet collectively and have our normal gathering during the week. But uh, you know, I'm here in my house right now, and I'm actually giving you the Word of God from here, and you can worship God at your house. We can worship God anywhere. Of course, we miss that gathering together, but uh, hopefully it won't be long, and we will be back together. I miss you guys so much. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, we used to always go to Louisiana to see all my family. And my grandma and grandpa lived way out in the sticks, I mean in the woods. And sometimes me and my cousins, we would go out in the woods and sometimes it get lost. It's like we didn't know where we were. And I think that there are times in our lives when we feel like we're in the woods. We feel like we are in the wilderness of trials and afflictions and problems that come into our lives. And, and we're like, we don't know where to turn. We don't know how to get out of the woods, so to speak. And, uh, and that's exactly what our text is about today. In fact, if you have your Bible, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. And it's an incredible passage that is a, a passage about um, those wilderness times in our life, just going through those victoriously and, uh, and, and being able to deal with adversity in our lives. And so I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. And the Apostle Paul is writing this. And he's reminding us of how God's people in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel, had left, they left the slavery of Egypt. And when they left Egypt land, uh, they were taken into the wilderness. They had to go through the wilderness in order to be able to get into the beautiful land area that God had promised them. And so they were in the wilderness, and they're in the wilderness, and Moses is their leader. And so the Apostle Paul is writing to us, to the church, and he's talking about that time period there in the Old Testament. Look at it with me, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Verse number 1, he says, I would not want you to be unaware he said that all our fathers were under the cloud and they passed through the sea, talking about the Red Sea. And it says they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. In other words, Moses was their leader. He led them through that, the Red Sea on dry land, and they were identified with Moses. Hey, we're with you, Moses. And now look at verse number three. It says they all ate the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. In other words, when they were in the wilderness, God was right there with them the entire time. And so while they're in the wilderness, we know as we study the Bible that they encountered adverse circumstances. Uh, they went through trials and problems. It wasn't for the purpose of destroying them, but unfortunately that's what happened to a lot of them is they were destroyed. In fact, if you look down at verse five, the next verse, it says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased and they were overthrown or destroyed in the wilderness. And so the apostle Paul writes this and he says that there's something for you and I today to be able to learn from this. Look at verse number six. He says, now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. You see, these adversities should have caused the nation of Israel to see that in God they had everything they needed. I mean, he led them across the Red Sea on dry land in order to escape King Pharaoh and his and and you know him chasing them. They're in the wilderness, they're thirsty. God sends water out of a rock. They are uh, hungry and God sends them manna from heaven. And so these, these trials and these adversities should have caused them to see that God was enough, that God was sufficient for their every need, no matter what, they could trust God. 
The adversities of the wilderness should have been a time whereby their faith grew and their faith matured. But instead of growing in the wilderness, they were destroyed in the wilderness, unfortunately. If you look at verse number seven, he goes on to say, he says, notice some of the problems they dealt with here in the wilderness. It says, neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to to revel, to party. He says, neither let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them committed, when 23,000 fell in one day. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Neither murmur, as some of them also murmured. They complained, right? And he said they were destroyed by the destroyer. (laughs) During times of adversity, the nation of Israel really got sidetracked. You know, I mean, they got their eyes off of God. They, they got their eyes on other things, as we just read. And that can happen to all of us. You know, right now, we're going through this, this virus thing, you know, and, and it's so easy to get our eyes off of God because many of us feel like we're in the woods. You know, we're in the wilderness right now. Maybe we've gotten furloughed from our job or we've gotten laid off or there's just problems at work because of all this or there's problems at home or there's there's trials in our life. Maybe we have loved ones that are sick and they're battling right now and, you know, life goes on. Maybe we've got loved ones and they need surgery and they can't get it because of all this. And so, you know, life has its own set of problems uh, you know, before the coronavirus and now all of a sudden we have this on top of it. And, and the thing is, though, is just as Israel got their eyes off of God and they got sidetracked in the wilderness, there's people that's going to happen to them, you know, during this time. And, you know, we're, we're not going to church. Uh, we're not around other believers like we were. We're not uh, having that accountability that we did. Uh, and so what's going to happen is, unfortunately, there will be believers that will struggle. And they will uh, get their eyes off of God. Of course, that does not have to happen. In fact, in verses 12, 13, and 14, Paul is going to make application from the nation of Israel and what they went through in the wilderness. He's going to make application to our lives today. And he's going to give us some incredible insights into how we can grow through times of adversity. And, you know, when we're going through trials and problems and adversity, there are truths that we must know. We got to get rooted. We got to get grounded. There's truths that we have to know in order that we may grow so that God can flow in and through us. So when you're going through problems, remember that. Just kind of remember those three key words, know, grow, and flow. We want to know some things. Why? So that we can grow through these trials. Why? So that God can flow in and through us. And so that we can, in fact, uh, come out of the trials and the problems in the wilderness stronger than when we entered in. That's the goal. And so what are the things that we want to know? Right? We, we got to know so we can grow. So what are the things that we need to know? Well, the first thing we need to know is Paul says that nobody goes through life without times of adversity. Uh, if you look at verse number 11, let's skip down here. Verse number 11, he says, Now all these things happen to them for examples. And then he says, They are written as an admonition to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. So Paul says these adversities that Israel went through, they're written, they're documented here in the Word of God as examples for us today. They're written for our admonition. And that word just means our warning. And so we're to learn from them. Well, what does that teach us? Just as Israel experienced times of adversity, we will too. That's part of life. Job said that's part of life. You know, man that's born of woman is of full days, is of a few days and full of trouble. So we're all going to go through times of trouble. We're all going to go through trials. We live in a fallen creation, you know, and uh, that's part of the fallen creation that we live in is that we're going to go through wilderness times. We're going to go through problems. We're going to go through trials. We're going to have times of affliction. Now, notice the beginning of verse 13. Skip down there with me. And he says, no temptation has taken you except what's common to man. That word temptation doesn't necessarily mean a temptation like we think of, a, uh, you know, being tempted to sin although that that could definitely be uh, part of that. But the word temptation there simply means adversity. He says, there's no adversity taking you, but what's common to man. 
There's no adversity. There's no trial that you can go through that is unique only to you. He says that our adversities are common to man. And that phrase there, common to man, if you look it up, just means human. So I'm human, you're human, we're all human, and uh, that's good to know, right? And so we live in a fallen uh, world in which Satan, Jesus said, is the God of this world. And therefore, uh, because we're human, we're going to go through adversities and trials, just like Israel did, we are too. So that's the first truth, is that uh, you know we're all going to go through times of adversity in this life. The second truth that we need to know is this. Nobody is above falling in times of adversity. Look at verse number 12, and it's very self-explanatory. Verse number 12 says, "Let uh, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And I think we all understand that, right? Paul is teaching here that there is no place in the Christian life for pride or arrogance. That, That sets us up for a fall especially when we're going through times of adversity, when we're going through times like this right now, when, you know, again, we can't meet as a church and and we've got problems and we got other things that we're dealing with. He says, make sure that you, you know, don't think that you're above falling. Uh, you know, when, when you get saved and you trust Christ, typically there is a honeymoon period where you have this, spiritual euphoria, and you just think that nothing can touch you. You're never going to sin again. You're never, you know, life's going to be a bed of roses. And and now that I'm saved, now that I know Jesus, it's going to be smooth sailing. And uh, life is going to be easy. And then, so what? when trials come, after we trust Christ, and when problems and afflictions come in our life, Sometimes it can be devastating for new believers. By the way, that's why it's very important that we get new believers rooted and grounded in the truth of God's Word. Remember, we got to know so we can grow so that God can flow through us. And so it's very important for new believers to get rooted and grounded. We call it discipleship. And uh, Pastor Rich talked about this, uh, I think, at the beginning of the year. We talked about, hey, would you like to disciple someone? Get a new believer rooted and grounded in the truth of God's Word. And then we said, hey, are you maybe a, a, a newer, you know, you're new to this. You're a newer Christian, a new believer. Would you like to have someone mentor you or teach or instruct, disciple you in the truths of God just to get you rooted and grounded? And that is all very, very important because when we go through these wilderness time periods like Israel did, when we go through these times of trial and affliction, Satan can use pride to bring about our destruction. And that's why Paul just taught us here in verse 12 the importance of maintaining a spirit of humility. We cannot get an arrogant spirit. We cannot think, well, you know, I'll be okay. Um, You know, coronavirus, right? We're like, well, you know what? I know we're not going to church for, you know, five, six, seven, eight weeks, but I'm going to come back just as strong and I'm going to come back and I'm going to be faithful. You know, we don't want to get arrogant. We want to realize, no, I'm not above getting out of church and getting out of the habit of going. And I'm not above, you know, um, you know, not, uh, you know, feeding myself during this time period spiritually to make sure I'm strong and make sure that I come through this adversity strong, you know, because God wants us to be a light through this and God wants us to be a testimony for him through this. And, and, you know, you're the church, the church isn't the building. I know we can't meet in the building right now, but that building is, is it, it is what it was before this. It's a building. The church is the people we are, we are crossroads. And so we want to be strong through this, but then we also want to be strong once we get through this. And once we're on the other side of this, we want to be strong. We want to be strong in the Lord. We want to be able to, to be a light, be a testimony, and, and radiate the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to our community and uh, help people that are broken to pick up the broken pieces and put them back together. But, but the thing is this, we cannot think that we're above falling. Paul said right there in verse 12, look at it again. He said, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And so, you know, sometimes I think that we can tend to be very hard on people who have struggles. And, and we can be like, well, I'd never do that. You know, I would, I would never do what they're doing. And Paul says that's a dangerous attitude. That's, a, that's somewhat arrogant. Galatians 6.1, that's why it says, if you see someone who's struggling, he says you need to approach them in a spirit of meekness or humility, considering yourself 
lest you also be tempted. So, you know, that's the second truth here is, uh, you know, number one, nobody goes through life without times of adversity, wilderness times. And then the second thing is, he says, the second truth is that nobody is above falling in times of adversity. But then there's one final thing. And the third truth is this, nobody has to fall. And this is encouraging. Up to now, it's not overly encouraging, is it? It's like, wow, okay, I'm going to go through times of adversity and I'm not above falling. And, but now here's the encouraging news. Okay. The last point, so encouraging. Nobody has to fall during times of adversity. That's the beauty of it. You can stand, you can be victorious, you can come through that thing stronger than when you went into it. And that's what verse 13 is all about. And so let's look at it. Verse number 13. It's one of the greatest promises in the New Testament. He says, no temptation. And that word temptation just means a trial, an affliction. There's no trial, there's no affliction that's taken you. He says, except what's common to man. Human, right? We're human. And, and he says, God is faithful and he will not permit you to be tempted above what you can endure, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That's a great verse. That, that's one of my favorites. And that verse, unfortunately, has really been misunderstood and misinterpreted, I believe, by a lot of people. Because some people kind of use that verse to teach that, that uh, you know, God is putting the believer through adverse circumstances on purpose, intentionally to strengthen you. And they teach that God does this to prepare you or to enable you to do something great later. And then that goes on, they go on to say, based on that verse, that God puts you through all this. And then when you're right at the breaking point, I mean, when you're just about to snap, you know, then God's going to come in, swoop in, and he's going to deliver you. And of course, that all sounds very intriguing. But that is not what Paul is teaching in that verse. Um, and by the way, people have asked, do you think the, the coronavirus has been sent by God, Pastor Dan? Uh, and there's you know, people that have said that, you know, that God has sent the coronavirus as a judgment. You know? And no, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, I think that sickness and disease and viruses have been around since sin entered the world. And there's something that we are going to continue to deal with until Jesus Christ returns one day and sets up his kingdom and the, and the curse of sin is lifted off the earth. Satan's put out of business. That's when we're not going to deal with these things anymore. But this is, this is just part of life. It's, it's, it's common to man. It's something that we're going to have to all deal with uh, until Jesus lifts the curse of sin you know, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think verse 13 means that God uh, is sending the coronavirus. I don't think it means that he's sending trials into our lives. Number one, it doesn't say that. But number two, did you notice that the adversity or the temptation uh, there in that verse, he said it's common to man. So he isn't discussing things that are unique here only to believers. He says, no, these are common to man. These are common to saved and unsaved people alike. We're not talking about some special, unique testings here from the hand of God. No, what, what we see, here's what we see is unique to the believer. All right, here's what is unique. God is faithful and God is going to make the believer able to handle these things without breaking apart under the load. As believers, we aren't we are not left helplessly to face these things alone. We have a relationship with God, we are in Christ, we are complete in Christ. We have all that Christ is living inside of us. In fact, Ephesians 3:20 says now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. I love 2 Corinthians 2:14. Uh, where it says there, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And that word triumph there means to conquer. It means to give victory. And he says, God makes us to always triumph in Christ. And so I want to reiterate what, what I've said is that these wilderness, this wilderness time period, this problems, these, these uh, trials that we're going through, he says they are common to man. He says saved, unsaved, 
You know, everyone goes through these things, he says. These trials, he says, there's no trial you can go through that isn't just common to humanity. Okay, here's what is unique. Is he says, you know what, as a believer, God's faithful. And he says that God is going to make the believer able to handle these things if we seek him. And if we seek God, the Bible says he provides a way of escape. Did you read that? He says God's going to, he says God will with the temptation make a way of escape. You say, what is that all about? The way of escape. Well, you know, here again, it, what you commonly hear there is, you know, when you're right at the breaking point, you know, when you're, when you're right about to, to pop or implode. And I've got a balloon here, you know, uh, I dropped it, but uh, we got, I got a balloon, you know, and, and so people kind of look at this in a wrong way, like God is sending these trials, you know, and it's like, You know, here's a trial. Here's a trial. God sends another one. And God's, you know, day after day, God's sending you through this trial. And, you know, if you keep blowing on this balloon, by the way, isn't that nice? Daniel, you notice that? It's got uh, my name on there, on the balloon. Whenever I do an illustration, I always like to personalize it and make sure my name is on the illustration. Just kidding. These are some balloons that were given to me for my birthday. And so, <laughs> but... Uh, but, you know, God's sending these trials and right about when you are to explode, that balloon is you, right? And these trials are coming in your life and day after day and right about when you're about to pop, I mean, right about when you are about to implode, right? They say, oh, then God's going to swoop in. God's going to deliver you. And oh, wow, it's going to be great. You know, and God's, God's going to deliver you. Well, that is not what that verse is saying. There's an, there's an obvious problem with that kind of thinking. And here's the obvious problem. Look at the end of the verse. Look at the end of verse 13. He says, God will make a way of escape that you may be able to, and what's the last two words there? You see it? That you may be able to bear it. To bear it. Wow. You know what that means? If you look up that phrase there, to bear it, it means literally to bear from underneath, to undergo hardship. I, when I think about bearing something, I think about, you know, carrying something really heavy, you know, and, and you've got something like this, like this tote. Let me see if I can get it up. Oh, oh man, this thing's heavy. Oh, wow. You got this. Yeah, you got this, this really heavy thing and you're carrying this, this, this thing and, and you're trying to bear up underneath it and you're trying to get it to where it's supposed to go and you're just trying with, I hope I can make it, I hope I can make it. And you know, we had to, uh, when we moved my son Caleb recently uh, to, to Colorado, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he lived on the third floor. Right. And he has an entire U-Haul full of furniture and, you know, dressers and beds and sofas. And, and we've got to carry all this stuff up three flights of stairs. And of course, it's a mile high there, you know. And so you're, you're out of breath and you don't feel like you can make it, you know, and you're trying to just bear up underneath it. And, and sometimes maybe you've had that happen. And you're literally trying to carry something real heavy like I've got right now. It's so heavy, you know, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to bear up under it. And then you can't make it. Before you get there, you drop it. You know, hopefully you don't drop it on your toe or drop it on somebody else's toe that's helping you. But you drop it, right? And you say, man, what's in that toe? Actually, there's nothing. I was just faking that. But, uh, but that's an illustration uh, that, uh, that, you know, you drop it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, man. I didn't make it. Well, think about this. God says in his word here, there's no temptation taken you, but that's common to man. And then he said, God will make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it, to endure it. God says, no, I'm not. You know what? If you rely on me, I'm not going to let you drop the load. I'm not going to let you drop that on your toe. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let that trial destroy you. God says, I'm going to help you to be able to see it through. I'm going to allow you to be able to, to, to get underneath that thing and, and carry that load. How does God do that? Well, of course he does it through his word. He does it through the marvelous resources he's given us in Christ. You know, he uses other believers, right? To encourage us, right? When we need it, the Bible says, bear one another's burdens. 
right? And, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So sometimes a, a, a brother will come beside us and say, man, you know what? That's, that's awful heavy, you know? And let me help you with that. And they'll, they'll come and they'll help you, you know, to carry that load. And God says, I'm going to help you carry that. I'm, I'm going to allow you to see that thing through, all the way through. In fact, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having enough of everything, may abound to every good work. You see, if adversity swallows us up and destroys us, we cannot point an accusing finger at God and say, God, you put too much on me. No, God has provided a way of escape that you may be able to bear it or endure it. The way of escape is not God removing the circumstance or just, you know, coming in and swooping in and delivering you out so that you don't have to face it anymore. But the deliverance is God empowering you so that you can go through that thing victoriously by applying His Word and applying His grace to that situation. You're able to bear up under it and, and it doesn't destroy you. There is no adversity that you'll ever face that God hasn't given you the solution in His Word. Your sufficiency in Christ gives you the capacity to stand in faith and in the solution that God gives you in His Word. You don't have to fall. And so we've got three truths here that we've learned today. And that is, you know what? We're all going to go through times of adversity. And then the second thing that we learned is that, you know, nobody's above falling during times of adversity. But then the third thing that we learned is that nobody has to fall during these times of adversity. You know, here's the promise. As you do go through adversity, and, and you will, like we said, because we, we live in a fallen creation, but when you go through those times of adversity, God is able to take those adversities and God is able to transform that which maybe looks very negative and maybe it is very negative, but God's able to transform that negative and turn it into something positive that will bring glory to Him and to His name. God has promised you that no matter what life throws at you, He will provide you the grace to bear it. And you know, we've all been through devastating times in our life. I mean, we've all had times in our life, I know I have, when we've wept and cried because of sorrow of heart and because something just, just broke our heart. It just broke our spirit. It just tore, tore us up, you know? But yet, I think those of you out there who have known the Lord very long at all, you know that God's grace is very amazing and that God does do exactly what He said when we seek Him. And that is, He's faithful. And He won't permit us to be tempted to go through a trial above what we can endure. But He will, with that adversity, with that trial, He'll make a way to escape that we may be able to bear it, to endure it. And so this morning, I hope that, uh, that this has been an encouragement to you, this message. I hope it's blessed your heart. And I hope it's kind of helped to just root and ground you in some truth because I know many of you are going through some hard times and I want you to know we're here for you and our, our church office phone lines are still open and receiving calls each day. And we want you to know that you can call, you can give us your prayer request. And then we uh, take those prayer requests, we send them out to our staff, our pastors, so that we can be praying for you. And so we love you, we are here for you. At this time, uh, Clayton and Colin and Aiden are gonna come back and they're going to lead us in one more song. And that song goes along so perfect with the message today. They taught us a new song last week called Another in the Fire. And uh, man, what a great song to go along with this thought that, you know, God doesn't always deliver us, uh, you know, from the fiery furnace, but He'll deliver us through it. And, uh, and that, that song is so awesome. I hope you'll sing along with them and try to learn that. I can't wait until we all get back together and we can sing that in church together. But, uh, but they're going to do that in just a moment. Sing that awesome song that God is with you through the fire and He'll give you the strength 
to be able to bear whatever it is that you're going through. He'll give you the grace you need to sustain you. And uh, at this time is when we normally, of course, do our, our offering and giving. And uh, we appreciate so much the generosity of all of you and how so many of you are giving generously to help keep the church strong during this time. It means so much. And so if you want to do that now, you can. We're just going to take about a minute and have some instrumental music. Uh, and then uh, you can pray, meditate on what you've heard, and then they're going to come back and do that final song for us. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much. It means so much uh, having you here today to be a part of this Bible study. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. This is Pastor Dan saying God bless you. grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire My dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding How power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody now the power lives in me There is another in the fire Whoa. There is another in the fire
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus He who was and still is and will be through it all So come what may in the space between All the things unseen in this reckoning I know I will never be alone Sing that out, I know I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Sitting next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding How could you meant to be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I can see I can see the light In the darkness As the darkness bows to Him I can feel the rock In the heavens As the space between west I can feel the ground Shake beneath us As the prison walls came in Nothing stands between us There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding How good you meant to me I'll count the joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's when you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's when you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be What a great way to end the service today. And our guys are doing such an awesome job leading us in worship from the comfort of their own living room, bringing it into our living room. And today I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the, the hundreds of you that have continued to be faithful in your generosity to the church so that we can get the gospel both into, into the community and around the world during this time. So many people are searching for hope and it's our prayer that through the internet and, and through other means of the community outreach that we can do on a limited basis, that they're finding real hope in Christ. And so thank you. If you want to give to Crossroads, you can simply click on the give link at crbible.com. You can go to crbible.com slash give or right here on the YouTube channel. You can click on the give button right below the video. Hey, we don't take it lightly. We want to just say thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, we miss everybody so much and look forward to being able to worship again corporately. Hope you have a great week, and God bless. Mm -hmm.